recently, some vessels were attacked in the Gulf region. The US military released a video they said was evidence the Iranians had mined a tanker and were responsible for the attacks. Now, this might be what happened. Let me stress that again. This might be what happened. But some, perhaps understandably, are urging caution, saying that at the moment the evidence isn't strong enough to appoint blame or take action beyond further investigation. The UN Secretary General, for example, said facts must be established and responsibilities clarified. A senior advisor to the European Union's foreign policy chief said, Before we blame someone, we need credible evidence. The German Minister of Foreign Affairs said the video is not enough to make an assessment about what happened. And in the UK, Labour's Emily Thornberry, the shadow foreign secretary, said, I think that we have to start off as the UN, as Germany, as Jeremy Hunt said on your programme yesterday, we need to establish proper evidence on what happened in this case. This seemed to be the opinion of a number of other EU foreign ministers when they met to discuss the issue. Back in the UK, and the leader of the opposition, Labour's Jeremy Corbyn, echoed these sentiments, saying that, before appointing blame, we need credible evidence about what happened. Ignoring the similar voices, Conservative MPs and the new political party Change UK jumped on Corbyn to condemn him. Basically, they called him a traitor who was a danger to the country and would be unfit to be Prime Minister. Notice the purposefully inaccurate rhetoric of these statements. Corbyn wasn't saying that no action should be taken, and he wasn't saying Iran didn't do it. He, like others, was saying we don't yet know who did it, and that we need stronger evidence before acting. He was calling for patience and further investigation. To me, this seems like a sensible approach to take, especially when the stakes are so high, as I'll explain. As Thornbury and others have pointed out, there was a time in the recent past in which the West acted militarily on very weak evidence. In 2003, the West, led by the US, invaded Iraq because Iraq, so we were told, had weapons of mass destruction. It turned out that that wasn't true. Iraq didn't have weapons of mass destruction. We'd instigated an eight-year war based on poor evidence, killing hundreds of thousands of people. This helped contribute to instability in the region, leading to more deaths and contributed to the rise of terrorism. It might be worth noting that the MPs who set up Change UK and who were in power at the time of the Iraq war all voted in favour of the war. This old approach of jumping to aggression, which did so much damage in the past, is still part of what they unironically call new politics. They say politics is broken and needs fixing, but they were and continue to be part of the broken politics. The UK Foreign Minister, the Conservative Jeremy Hunt, said Corbyn had virulent anti-Americanism, even though Corbyn never mentioned the US. But in this context, it might actually be justified to show some scepticism towards the US. It was the US who, despite the weakness of the evidence, led the unjustified war on Iraq. In fact, parts of the so-called evidence against Iraq were embellished and sexed up, including by the UK. This isn't to say that the US has fabricated the situation in the Gulf, but it should give pause for thought. It's happened before in our recent history with devastating consequences, so let's be cautious this time. This is particularly important in a context in which the National Security Advisor, whom Trump appointed, just really, really wants to have a war with Iran. John Bolton was one of those involved in instigating the unfounded war in Iraq. He'd been gunning for it since at least 1998. And he believes it was a successful invasion, despite its consequences. Something that not even Tucker Carlson could understand. So you've, you've called for regime change in Iraq, Libya, Iran and Syria. In the first two countries, we've had regime change. And obviously it's been, I'd say a disaster. I think we no, agree. No, okay. I, I don't agree with that. And, and let, me, let me... You don't think it's been a disaster? No, be, no because I think your analysis is simple-minded, frankly. Okay. So if you, I mean, I, I'm not saying you're the only person who thinks that. You're the only person I have met who thinks that. What would you say if you could sum up the one lesson from what has happened in Iraq? What would it be? Well, I think the overthrow of Saddam Hussein, that military action, was a resounding success. And the point I think you need to understand... Yeah is that life is complicated in the Middle East. And when you say, well, the overthrow of Saddam Hussein was a mistake, well, is simplistic. I, I would argue that I'm the one who understands how complicated it is, but just my view. It's, it's your long experience in foreign policy, I know. <laughs> Better record than yours, I would say. But thank you, Ambassador. Good to see sure. you. Iran has also been in Bolton's targets for many years. And in 2017, he declared that the U.S. would invade Iran by 2019. I have said for over 10 years since coming to these events 
that the declared policy of the United States of America should be the overthrow of the Mullah's regime in Tehran. The behavior and the objectives of the regime are not going to change, and therefore the only solution is to change the regime itself. And that's, and that's why before 2019, we here will celebrate in Tehran. Thank you very much. He really wants a war with Iran. This might cause him to, I don't know, act rashly or fabricate evidence. So perhaps we'd better go cautiously. Invading and intervening in other countries is certainly not a new thing for the US. It's not even something limited to the last two decades. The US has a long history of attacking other countries for various reasons, including to secure resources for itself. The Iraq war, for example, was largely waged to secure oil for the US. When talking about intervention in Libya, Trump himself said he would have only got involved if he got to secure the oil there. But I tell you what, I'm only interested in Libya if we take the oil. If we don't take the oil, I have no interest in Libya. It's possible that a similar reason is why the US wants a war with Iran, and again, treading cautiously is sensible. Sometimes the US invades countries under the pretense of helping that country, when really it's helping itself to the resources there. And often, these wars have done massive amounts of damage, both to the country that was invaded, to the wider region, and even to the world at large. US-led wars in the Middle East have contributed to terrorism in the West, for instance. Another recent example of US interference in other countries is Venezuela, where the US has probably been involved in trying to start a coup and says it may become involved through military action. The US Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, has even said that the US would interfere in the UK, supposedly the US's closest ally, by blocking Jeremy Corbyn should he have chance of becoming Prime Minister. Given the US's historic and recent keenness to invade and interfere in the politics of other nations, sometimes on weak or even fabricated evidence, and also its current desire to invade Iran, the caution of Corbyn and others is sensible. Remember, Corbyn and the others aren't saying Iran didn't do it. They're saying we need better evidence. Should such evidence come, Corbyn and the others will appoint the blame where it is due. We had an example of this in 2018, when some people were poisoned in the UK. As soon as the poisons occurred, some people blamed Russia, even though the evidence wasn't conclusive. Like with recent events, Jeremy Corbyn called for patience and a full investigation before appointing blame, and of course he was condemned for this too, and called an apologist or Russian lackey. But when more complete evidence emerged that tied Russia to the poisonings, Corbyn followed the evidence and said that Russia had carried out the attacks. Asking for patience and caution isn't a way of avoiding blaming the aggressors. It's a way of making sure the right people take responsibility and that we avoid doing rash things like starting a war over weak or false evidence. Not that long ago, the US was involved in another disastrous war that was opposed by many around the world, including by many US Americans, the Vietnam War. This may be a coincidence, but the US initiated that war because of an attack by the Vietnamese on vessels in the Gulf of Tonkin. The thing is, it turned out vents were fabricated by the US in order to have an excuse to start a war with Vietnam. I'm not saying this is what the US has done this time, but US history suggests caution in the present. I mean, it's possible the US has already fabricated things in relation to Iran. In May, the Taliban attacked US forces in Afghanistan, but a few weeks later, Pompeo blamed it on Iran. All of these reasons, and there are others, indicate it's worth being patient and investigating carefully before blaming and acting. Corbyn and the others are the wiser politicians here, and the Conservative and Change UK MPs are acting foolishly, following an old, broken politics. If these politicians are foolish though, I don't know what that makes the likes of Pompeo and Bolton. As an epilogue, Let's just note Trump's frequent predictions that Obama would invade Iran in order to boost his ratings and win elections. Laugh and cry.